<laughs> Welcome to the OC Bitches. Welcome to the OC Bitches. I'm sorry, I'm still chewing. I'm Uh-oh. eating breakfast as we record, so forgive the smacking or crunching. Or if there's stuff in my teeth. Hello. You look like, uh, it's nice to see you. It's been a couple weeks. I know. It feels like a very long time. Yeah, we had a little vacation. We did. It was nice. How was your time off? It was a staycation. Oh, I saw it, you went surfing. I did. And it's like, I grew up, I, I learned when I was eight years old in Waikiki. Oh, and wow. then, and with an old timer on the beach and did it again when I was 10. And then I would attempt it every week or sorry, every summer when I was a teenager in the, mm-hmm. in the OC. <laughs> and then I, I got on the board again. I for love the first it. Time in How'd a while. you do? I, I did well. There's, it's, ba- there are baby waves because I don't like getting munched. I've been munched too many times in my munched. life. Munched? Munched, I call it. Is yeah. that a surf term? <laughs> munched in the waves. <laughs> I don't know. I could think of other things that mean munch. Uh, anyway. No. <laughs> Today, yes. we are season three, episode seven, The Anger Management. Uh, today's guest is YouTuber and OC super fan. I hope you're a super fan. Dylan Matthews, <laughs> aka Dylan is in trouble. Dylan grew up in Wisconsin and started out as a storytime YouTuber. He then started rewatching movies and TV shows, giving his genuine and hilarious reactions. His Twilight video rewatch has over 7 million views and counting. Dylan is a huge fan of the OC, having bought all the box sets, which he still watches to this day. We recommend (laughs) you check out his YouTube page and, of course, his rewatch take on the OC pilot, which I watched, which is fucking hilarious. I know. (laughs) Dylan is in trouble. His page is on YouTube. Welcome, Dylan. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. It's weird that just having the DVDs in the background of a video and just like the dominoes that have led to this is kind of crazy. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that video was, is very old. So it's hard. I went back and watched it just so if there's any references in this video or in this uh, podcast for it, then uh, I catch it. And yeah, that's it's a very old video. I uh, yeah, uh, it's hard to go back and watch your old stuff and not cringe a little bit. Oh, well, we get that completely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of that. A little bit of that. But, so, but y- sometimes we, we pat ourselves on the back, too. A little bit of pride. Uh-oh, seven deadly sin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll go back and I'll laugh at my old videos, though. So I don't, that, that is ego, though. So, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So what we're speaking about is that you have a, like, you just, well, like, like we just said, you have an um, episode where you watch the OC pilot and... And you comment on it and you're quite funny. And you have a lot of, you, you, you put a lot of your humor in the editing as well. Do you do all, everything yeah. yourself? Uh, yeah. So for the past, uh, well, what I'm best for, known for is just watching a, a movie or a TV show and just making a bunch of jokes and just having fun. Uh, so yeah, I've been doing that for the past several years. And uh, I do most of the, the editing myself. Recently, I'm trying to like build a little team to uh, to help me make more videos and everything. But yeah, no, it's 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 a lot of work, but it's also just like uh, a ton of fun. So yeah, well, what got you into this? Like, were you just like, you know what? I'm pretty funny. I comment on things. <laughs> Why don't I share it with the world? <laughs> well, out of high school, I actually went to film school at a very real and legitimate school, and I got my degree in 16 months because it's a very real and legitimate school. <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so then I moved out to Los Angeles, and I was there for about a year and nine months. And then um, I was a production assistant on a number of different um, shows, movies, uh, commercials, et cetera. And I don't know, I just didn't feel like the right path for me. And I talked to my uh, my mentor at the time and I was like, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking about moving back. Uh, what do you think? And he's like, no, 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 you have to stay just five more years of being a production assistant and you'll move <laughs> up. And I was like, five years? <laughs> I, he was saying it like it was a good thing. And I was like, no, 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 no. So then I, I moved back to Wisconsin Saved up a little bit of money, uh, started YouTube, and that's where we are today. Wow. Well, by the way, everyone, the <laughs> production assistant, or PA, is mm-hmm. the probably the most difficult, thankless, mm-hmm. scapegoated um, position in the entire industry. <laughs> is that a good way to put it? Yeah, yeah. It's it's the lowest rung. It's uh, <laughs> if you were to disappear, uh, no one would notice, pretty, pretty much. Aw, well— I mean, but, but not in a sense. Did you it's like, just like? Did you have to deal with any you know, assholes that you can tell us about? <laughs> I mean, not really. I think everyone's is pretty friendly. Um, it was good experiences, but uh, yeah, just a lot of long days, hard days, and uh, man, I'm just lazy. I guess I, yeah. <laughs> I like just <laughs> recording myself and just making jokes and stuff. That's that's my life now. So yeah, no, tw- well, eighteen hours, twenty hours of standing. A lot of times PAs aren't even allowed to sit down. But but if you are interested in this industry, that is how one starts. You start as a PA and you figure out which department you want to go into. You make friends, you move up, 
And, um, and that's how you get respect. Just a little tip yeah. of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tip of the day. From and old Munch Surfer here. So. <laughs> that so, sounded really bad. <laughs> munch. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Mm. It is early. Oh, boy. You're right. It's not that. Well, it's not. It's not, it a feels five, it. it's not a 5.30 a.m. call. My brain is not awake. <laughs> so, you, you were into the OC. Was it something you were into growing up? Or, like, how did that happen? How old are you? Yeah, so I... One thing I did mention in the uh, <laughs> the rewatch of the pilot episode that I made a video about, uh, for some reason, I have so few memories from my childhood. I, I was dropped in my head a lot, so it explains <laughs> a lot of things. But, uh, yeah, so one thing... I remember my mom specifically gathering my brother and myself into the living room. Because, like, this is so rare for her to do, but she was like, we have to watch the show. Because uh, she had heard really good uh, reviews for the show. Uh, it was like a re-airing of the pilot. So we sat down, we watched it together as a family for a little while. I was, oh, man, I don't know, maybe like 11, 12 years old. So, like, a lot of it was going over my head. So it wasn't until later where I rewatched it and I fell in love with it. So, yeah, it took me a while, but uh, eventually, um, like, Around the time I was in college, I started rewatching, and then that's when I fell in love with it. And now it's a running joke, and I get a bunch of DMs from people. I guess people angry at me if they, like, finish season three. They're like, why would you make me watch this? <laughs> so just because of what happens and everything, they get all invested, and uh, sad things happen. But you, Yeah. You looked—well, do you mind me asking how old you are? Yeah, well— <laughs> <laughs> Well, if he was I 11. have a new joke on my channel where I'm 20— uh, okay. Because I just turned 31. Okay. So now I, I tell everyone I'm 20. You but, have uh, a youthful so face. I was going to say 11 seems like it was just a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, so I'm only 20. That's We'll go with that. Okay. We'll go with Me too. Yeah, I just have my 13th <laughs> annual. No, wait. Yeah. Oh, shoot. 23rd annual 30th. Something like that. <laughs> birthday. Oh, yeah. Nice. I'm going to adopt the same thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be 20 forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we heard that you're a massive Volchok fan. And I need, yeah. I need explanation. And why? <laughs> uh, well, first and of all— And that's why you're just, in this— That's why we're talking to you for this episode, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I specifically requested a uh, Volchek episode. I'm just a massive Cam Gigante fan. Like, I, that guy just knows how to play a villain. So yeah. the movie I've seen more times than any other movie ever is Never Back Down. It's just all adrenaline fighting. And Cam Gigante is just— Oh, you're missing out. Okay. So yeah, it's just it's just a does, fighting does movie. Does Cam play villains? Uh, it mostly. Do you think? Uh well, he was he, he did Twilight, so he right. was a villain there. Was he a villain in uh, Twilight? I can't yes. remember. Yeah. I know I saw it. Yeah, yeah. So he's the main villain of the uh, the first one. Um, but yeah, it's I don't know. I think part of it too was like growing up skinny. Like I think he was the first time I saw a physique, and I was like, I can attain that. So then I kind of put him on a pedestal. <laughs> So uh, anything he's in, I I always joke about and skinny ripped, <laughs> surf skinny yeah. ripped. That's my that's yep. my type. Surf skinny ripped, and yeah. that is a type. I know. <laughs> tattoos and everything <laughs> like that. Yeah, he was just the man to you me. You're feeling so, it. Yeah, that's that's. Listen, I, he's you, easy on the eyes. I, I get it. I think uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, I think hot. Just yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want to kidnap me? Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, he's a villain, but Marissa's like. <sighs> You know, she's like, just hot under, okay, underneath. Okay, yeah. I'll come Const with you. Yeah. Whatever. No problem. <laughs> okay, I like bad boys. <laughs> Actually, can I have your jacket too? Thanks. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which she does. It's not so bad. Right. I mean, did you find that weird? I know we're going to yeah. get to that. Well, but she <laughs> had his jacket on. I think Misha was just cold, so they figured it out <laughs> without explanation. <laughs> They're like, we're going to give you Cam Gandhi's jacket. Oh, my gosh. So, okay. and then also, what what is it that, did you learn how to drink from Ryan Atwood? Did you learn how to drink? <laughs> Yeah, so you know how to drink. <laughs> yeah, people. In, I'm from Wisconsin. People in Wisconsin, they know how to drink, but I didn't get that genetic. So, I I don't drink often. So the right. first time I went to a bar, um, I didn't know what to order. I always went up to the counter, and the bartender's looking at me, and I'm looking at him, and I'm like, I do you have a menu or something? And and obviously you're supposed to just go up order. So I was just like, ah, uh, seven and seven. And they, uh, <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, sure, no problem. And I'm just, I, I was just thinking back to the <laughs> Ryan to the ordering pilot. that because that's the only yeah, drink I knew. that's what he orders in the pilot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is very God, funny. the cousin from Boston. Uh, was it yeah, disgusting? She, I don't think I've ever had a 7 and 7. It, what is yeah, seven I don't and think and I seven? enjoyed it that much. It's like Seagram it's like and 7 up. And 7 What is Seagram? Is I don't know. Is that a whiskey? Is that what it's called? Anybody? Katie? I don't know. Yes. Oh, I had that right. I am not a drinker at all. <laughs> hate alcohol. But I have yeah, a I'm not. I'm not a big drinker either. So yeah, going up and ordering, 
Uh, yeah, I just relied on what I knew. And yeah, Ryan kind of let me down. I have been a drinker and I've never drank that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, also, Mindy doesn't, like, you ask her lyrics from, like, the most famous songs and she'll be like, what? No, no, I know tunes, not the lyrics. Oh, right. (laughs) Sorry. Anyway, we stand corrected. That's okay. So, let's get into this episode. Yeah, let's get into this episode. Why don't you... uh, I'd love for you to um, just just give us your opinions um, because we're stale here. Your commentary? Oh, wait. But one thing I want to say before we get into the episode. Yeah. You enlightened me, Dylan, that Ryan Gosling references the OC. In La La Land. In La La Land. Hello. Ryan Gosling said the OC. He knows we exist. Just putting that out there. There's quite a few shows out there when they say they I don't mention care. the OC. Ryan Gosling Ron- said oh, it. oh, I see. They That's do that a, a lot. Deal. Yeah. I've, I've, anytime <laughs> I hear that, I always notice it. I also I wanted to ask you guys about this because yeah. it was like a big, a big thing for me. I don't know. As an OC fan, uh, the SNL skit that parodied oh, yeah. uh, the end of season two. What do I have you guys it? seen that? And what was your reaction to it? Your sister. Your sister. Well, have you? We you played need to, it on the sh- on the podcast. Yeah, you need to. Um, we discuss it at length with um, Logan Marshall Green. with Logan Marshall Green a few Sorry. episodes <sighs> back. I'm picking me. Okay, and That's... we actually watch it. We watch the mm-hmm. the dear sister. Mindy doesn't get it. I I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, there I don't a, get it. <laughs> there was a whole YouTube video that um, was like breaking down how that was like the dawn of a new generation of comedy. So, like, uh, there, is, there is a lot that went into that. Uh, yeah, it was like— I don't know. It's just so wild. 35 million views or something on right. that. No, yeah. and there's a Crazy. there's a huge generation of kids who only know the, the SNL. song with the skit with right. the gun and have never seen the OC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, like, the biggest accomplishment of the show. Yeah, the right. SNL skit. <laughs> yeah. Well, very good, then. Let's— uh, the, the synopsis of this episode, Rachel yes, yes, and Dylan, is uh, the tensions between Ryan and Volchok come to a head with Marissa trying to step in and help. Taylor's crush on Seth causes a rift in his relationship with Summer. Ah! Charlotte and Julie throw their faux benefit with Kirsten's help, who is completely clueless of the charity's true intentions. Meanwhile, Sandy officially takes over at the Newport Group, and the responsibilities of being a CEO takes a toll. <laughs> Here on Welcome to the OC Bitches. <laughs> okay, I'm working oh on my God, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, let's um, let's just get into Ryan, Marissa, Johnny Volchuk, and well, we say let's. Volchuk, not Volchuk. Volchuk. Uh, everyone knows out there, Kevin Volchuk, who is Adam Brody's agent and our friend Nicole's husband, is why Volchuk is named Volchuk just because of Kevin. Yes, He's a dear friend of ours. Yes, little. He has a perfect you? name. Like, it's such a good villain name, Volchek. It Vol- starts yeah. with a V. The V is such a villain Volchuk. thing. Yes, yeah. and, and Kevin is, uh, if we can't get the real Volchuk, or, or if we can't get Cam on the, on the <laughs> podcast. Kev? Yes, I think, we, will you ask him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, of course. He should come on, because he was there. We, we've had he everything. We, we need agents now. <laughs> <laughs> we need the executives. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so let's get into this. Let's start with the first episode. You guys, the foursome are the just scene. coming from the um, the Japanese movie that yes. Seth picked. Yes. And um, it really didn't work for everyone but Seth, right? Naturally. Naturally. Mm-hmm. And of course they say, but, but you know, the bring it on. That was really funny. And I do remember that. And I would still say that cheer to this day. Do you? I feel like I'm that- popular. I'm popular. Keep- I don't remember the word. Oh, really, but- no. <laughs> I know. So close. So close. But... <laughs> I was really, I was quite uh, fond of that moment when I watched it back. Yeah. (laughs) Just because we spend most of our time unconscious and quite possibly drooling doesn't mean that we can't do it in style. Drooling in style. Well, I've got something (laughs) for you. (laughs) Article has everything you need to turn your bedroom into your best room, all for a great price. Article offers cozy beds, swanky headboards, throw pillows, and tons of lighting options to help you set the tone. My husband doesn't know this, but I'm <laughs> shopping for a new bed. I have really? my eye on the Asher bed. I just love this beautiful simplicity of the modern yet classic design. Now, does he have a say in this decision? Well, I don't know. I'm doing this ad right now, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Article is the easiest way to make your space look beautiful. They offer the curation of a boutique furniture store with the comfort and simplicity of shopping online. Their team of designers are dedicated to bringing a modern aesthetic of mid-century Scandinavian industrial and bohemian designs. They also offer fast, affordable shipping across the USA and Canada. All-in-stock items are delivered in two weeks or less. Okay, I'm 
a huge online shopper, right? And I like things very quick. I am a big fan of that. So article, having the cutest furniture and the best aesthetic, the style totally suits my home. It is the best combination ever. But I also get into a lot of trouble because I just keep buying furniture and now I have like four couches in my living room. Do you really? Yeah, it's a problem. And they have speedy delivery. It was your point. That was my point right, was right. within two weeks. Like, you know, when you're on those other things and they're like, oh, six months. And you're like, um, I won't even remember what I bought by right. then. But you can get it the same week sometimes. Article is offering our listeners $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. To claim, visit article.com slash OC and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. That's A-R-T-I-C-L dot com slash OC for $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Everly Well is digital healthcare designed for you, all at an affordable and transparent price. If you've been experiencing symptoms and don't know where to start, Everly Well is committed to listening and supporting your journey towards better health and wellness. The Everly Well Women's Health Test measures 11 biomarkers known to play a role in your overall health and wellness and checks for any abnormal levels that may be keeping you from feeling your best. I did that one. And my food sensitivity Ooh. test is in the mail. Ooh. And it was actually kind of fun to do it. I think we're all pretty good at test, home test taking nowadays, yeah. gathering our own oh, info. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of a whole process, but Adam and I did it together and we had to prick our finger and oh, wow. put a little lab thing and send it off. So now I'm going to know what, what gives me gas. <laughs> I can't wait to hear your results. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, I'm a little apprehensive because I love food and I'm so scared that I'm going to learn that I'm allergic or have a sensitivity to everything. That's going to be traumatic for me. But what I love is this kit was so simple to test my daughter who was having some allergic reactions to certain foods and things. And this was very helpful. Everly Well has over 30 lab tests to choose from and so easy to use. Once you select your kit, Everly Well ships the at-home lab test to your home. You simply collect your sample and use the included prepaid shipping label to mail your test back to a certified lab. And within days, you receive a physician review. Everly Well also has high quality vitamins and supplements to support your overall health. Choose from a variety of options, including vitamin D3 and omega-3 fish oil. And for listeners of the show, Everly Well is offering a special discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash OC. That's everlywell.com slash OC for 20% off your next at-home lab test. Everlywell.com slash OC. Okay. So as you guys were doing that, Uh okay, you guys, I had to watch this a couple times. I rewound it. When Volchuk comes in Mm -hmm. and first, first of all, there's a close-up of Marissa. Uh-huh. It's a choice with the editing, directing. And the, the my first thought is she gets con- self-conscious, looks up and sees Volchuk. But is it because he's interrupting? But Or there's this little tingle going on inside of her. Like inside she's, her vagina? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm glad you're here to spell it out. <laughs> yeah, she got a tingle in the little UBT, the underball territory. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, it's Cam Gigante. How can you not? I mean, right? Well, because it was like, and then I was like, oh, no, it's just because they're they're embarrassed. But then I went, no, no, no. She is attracted to bad boys. I mean, how could you not be attracted to him? I'm sorry. I get it. It's very <laughs> subtle, but I, Look, I think it's the an intention is like, oh, no, here he is. Ryan, Volchuk, awkward, but like underneath it all. And when I say underneath it all, we know what I'm talking about. <laughs> right? She's feeling it a little did bit. You, did you think the same thing? There was a duality yeah, I, going on there. Well, that's my own personal opinion. Is just like, oh my god, Cam Chikande. But <laughs> yes, I I don't know. You had a ting- I, tingle I in your nether that, regions. Yeah, it's perhaps uh, <laughs> <laughs> there. I always thought though that at the because the end of the episode, how it ends, obviously with Ryan and I keep calling him Cam, but it's full check. But you can call him uh, Cam when that's they fine. <laughs> okay when they when they come to a head. It seemed like that was supposed to be Cam's last scene on the show. I don't know if that's headcanon for me or if they, they brought him back later because he was so good in that role, but... Hmm. Yeah. Do we, no, not, see, so, do we not, think, not see him for a while well, after this one? I think he disappears for a little bit. Oh, okay. I, you know, there's a few things I'm, I'm not remembering. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> I always look to Mindy because, you I, know, I everyone do knows I don't know. Okay. I do know things. So he probably does disappear for a few episodes. I'm not... I'm not, don't quote me on that. But you're right. I think there's something that happens in these shows because we don't have Josh or Stephanie here to say, 
Did How far in advance did you know what the finale of season three was going to be or where these characters were going? Because a lot of times these characters are brought in for a small arc and these writers say, I like writing for this character. They, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm inspired to do more and we can take it this way. He's really good as yes. this role. He's really good. Nate, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, he's really good in this role. And I know there's a lot of scenes with him in this, but like when he keys the car, in the yeah. parking lot. The only mm-hmm. thing I'm thinking is like, well, you can get him right there. Like, he's literally standing there in front of like 25 people keying this yeah. Range Rover. And I'm thinking, and I know they bring it up later because Sandy's like, well, well, he could be arrested right there. And I'm like, okay, well, at least they've acknowledged because like... It's, yeah, vandalism is a crime. I mean, it's a crime. On a, on a, on a private, or sorry, in a private school parking lot, which they probably would never have gained access to anyway, even back then. But that being said, you're yeah. right. I was like, okay. Well, that that I would lose my shit. I mean, I would absolutely, and I think it was cringy enough. I mean, the whole point of these shows is this, this accelerated magnetized or magnified drama, to the point where it's like the you cut to Ryan's hand squeezing into a fist, <laughs> and there's like, I mean, if there if he's, I mean, first of all, this the sound of a key across a Range Rover, and good yeah. and props to the prop or the. Um, transportation. You could see that they put this like... Oh, you could tell? Well, it was some kind of fat, um, material that was, as soon as you pulled it away, it made a big white mark, you know? And ah. then they add probably mm. the... But it but it was effective. It worked. It definitely worked. And he walks... Calling away, it like, the little bitch? Like, that's just like a... Uh, you got to drive around and little bitches on the side of your vehicle. I don't know. That's to <laughs> floor your pride a little bit. You know, <laughs> I do have to say, Ryan put himself in this position too. He did walk up and cold clock kid that's true you know that is true and then it wasn't even his fight and he just did it yeah right? wasn't it johnny's yeah he walked up and punt yeah because he kicked sand in the kid's face he he pushed johnny right. down and then kicked sand in, in his johnny's face. a little wimpy i'm not gonna lie <laughs> that classic I, I don't know about that at one point he wants to like race off to go fight volchek and then marissa has to talk him off the ledge Dude, wait, is that the scene at the school where she like runs after him? And he's like, it's Volchek. Yep. The funniest part to me in that scene <laughs> is she's walking with Chili and Johnny runs off and she's like, hold these. And she gives her books to Chili to run after Johnny. And I was like, that was really weighing you down. Happy you got rid of those. Like, it was so weird. <laughs> well, you never know what the director is saying on that day. He's like, just give, you know, or if it says it in the script or something. She like throws the books all dramatically <laughs> to run after him. Well, and then of course, what does he say? He's like, look, fighting a guy is one thing, but upsetting a lady, I'm just a coward. What do you think? <laughs> I, I, I literally have some notes for this episode. Okay, and I know, wrote that down. Shout them out. I wanted to fight him at that point. I wanted to fight Johnny <laughs> for saying that. You wanted to throw to the books lady, at him. I, oh, yeah, I would have thrown the books. Yeah. Oh, when it comes to upsetting a lady, I'm a coward. I, oh. I just, I feel Honestly, so bad for the actor. No, Because no, we're opposite. against him anyways. It's the opposite tingling down there feeling for Volchek. It's like they go back up inside oh, my no. body <laughs> and disappear forever. I do have to <laughs> say, though, as, as, much, as much as season three, three gets a bad rap from some people. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Oh, I, I am actually too. am enjoying it. I am too. I really like some of the, you know, the dynamics that have, have developed and, you know, yes. like Seth and Summer, super comfortable. Oh my gosh, I love it. And when we'll get into that storyline, but yeah. I like to watch on the treadmill and I'm just doing a lot of these, <laughs> like laughing out loud or especially, <laughs> just, I mean, it's so fun. I, I just applaud and celebrate peers of mine who just do so well and there's and when we get to those scenes there's there's quite a few in this episode so yeah t- not I, I don't know if we want to take it back because yeah. i wanted to talk about this as well the Good. after the the credits roll for the the intro the kitchen scene all the kitchen scenes are just like some of the most wholesome <laughs> best parts of the show this is when people gather in the kitchen and it's all just wit and character and um i think what made the oc so so good is just how well you guys bounced off each other with your unique characters and it just all meshed so well. So we just, like, I know we got, like, the big plots of, like, um, scam charities and all that. But, like, <laughs> the best parts, I think, of the OC were just, like, the, the quiet character moments where they're just having fun with each other, joking around, you know? Aw. Yes. No, th- we've we've said that many, many times that the cast Kitchen had teams. a certain, certain oh. chemistry and that Josh definitely took personality traits of each actor and, and inserted sure. them into the show, for sure. 
Yeah. And gave us permission to play. Yes. I think. And um, yes. Yeah, that was. Uh, we had a lot of fun. There's all, you can always see a lot of, and at the end of that scene, you know, because that, that was the scene where um, he's, it's Sandy's first day, it, which Ty and Kirsten's working on the charity. She needs help from the boys. And at first she's like, and booze or no booze. And they're like, that is kind of weird to be drinking when you're raising money for substance abuse, but we need money. So booze. And then boys, I need help. And of course, Seth. It's like, I'm busy. Sunday, and, and do it. Yeah, because um, it's the Sabbath and no. I'm like, thought. no, the Sabbath's Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep going. But at the very end of that, when he's like, okay, mom, I'll be there. Um, You can see that Peter and Adam had a moment where Peter smacks him pretty hard. <gasps> There's a lot of smacking yep. of, of stuff in this episode. Yeah. But you can see that that was an improv. And Adam's like, okay, yeah, I think mm. I'll be able to put things. But yeah, they, they, and Peter's just laughing like Peter. I like to point those out. Yes. <laughs> well done. But back with Ryan, Marissa, Johnny, Volchok. So they, so yes, yeah, so, you know, all the kids, we talked about the, the, the Range Rover being called Little Bitch now. And when they're at the bait shop and the, the subways, subways are, playing, are playing. And it's not a pity invite for Johnny. He's, and Marissa's explaining. He's like, this, you know, because they've invited him. And yeah. he's like, you guys are just not subtle at all. Trying to keep his mind off Casey, who's disappeared. But she's After. there, but she's not in the episode anymore. Right. And just when they're about to leave, Volchek shows up and Heather's back. Right. And um, they keep doing that, like, just shoot me joke with yeah. the gun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she will. But he kept saying, yeah, he kept saying, I'm going to find your Achilles heel or what gets you going. And sure enough, when he touches Marissa uh-huh. and Ryan goes Loses full. Loses it. Then yeah. he knows he found it. He goes, Kitchino. You will find it. Again. What surprises me, though, most is that they kick uh, Volchek out after Ryan. It seemed like Ryan was the aggressor. Yeah. And then the security comes and breaks him up and then kicks Volchek out instead of Ryan. And I wonder why. That was. Why, I know. Was I, it privilege? I the same thing. I was wondering. I'm like, well, do they know Ryan there? Like, Seth worked there. Marissa dated the old boss. Like, I don't know. Well, it was. It, yeah. I think it's a combination of two things. I think, yes, he must have either witnessed the whole thing, knows Ryan, Marissa, that group. Or. Or it's your, here's the wealthy kid, or and here's the not so wealthy kid. I don't maybe. know. Maybe so it's kind of a weird flip because then Ryan would be seen as the wealthy kid. Mm-hmm. So just right? from the beginning of the show, exactly. he's almost ingrained in this community, which I guess would be like a good metaphor. Yeah, it would be a good metaphor. Or this Volchuk, because they kept talk- they keep talking about how crazy he is that he's well known around town and he's a he's uh, a troublemaker. Yeah. He's known as the Volchuk. So all the things that happen. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. What is a Volchuk? What is Cam's? By the way, we just made it a part Volchuk. I, I wonder what Volchuk's. <laughs> I wonder what Volchuk's obsession is with like having like this duel almost instead of just like just go fight him. Like why is he like? Yeah, you have to meet me outside. It's like just I know. start punching each other. It'll it'll work itself out. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know why he's withholding. Like we know why Ryan is, but why is yeah, Volchuk? Yeah, it's. He wants, like, the proper gentleman's duel or something. I don't right. know. I know. Right. It's like all of a sudden we're in Bridgerton and they're like. <laughs> 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 sir. Sir. Yes. I will meet you. You have disgraced my honor. On three. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> Volchuk. Vulture Volchuk. chicken strikes again. <laughs> so, um, well, and then that, that exact, the next exact thing is that Ryan goes to Sandy and says, there's this guy right. and he's got it out for me. And he says, "Is that why my yeah. is that why my Range Rover is now called the Little Bitch?" Yeah, I'm driving around in the Little Bitch. <laughs> I mean, imagine there's not a parent on the planet who wouldn't see have, that and be like, uh, "Guys, hello." <laughs> right. He's like, "Yeah, I was gonna fix that uh-huh. with what money? That would be thousands of dollars." But he's but then Sandy says this thing. He's like, "You know, you can't fight. We can go to the cops." And then he's like, "You know, whatever he's angry about is nothing to do with you," which is such a mature adult concept right and he's like yeah i know so so instead of engaging with him ryan is actually going yeah who knows what kind of life he has at home if his dad abuses him is a drunk or who 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 knows we never actually really find out i don't think we don't get to know we he stays a villain by us not knowing what his child what his home life because is, like think. the opposite with taylor in this episode right, right? Mm-hmm. as remember i kept um indicating i'm like you're going to get to a few episodes back where she was just being awful. And I said... She's still awful in this episode, but you're getting more layers and seeing right. why. Well, it's it's easier when you know somebody's background. 
And if they're just an asshole or they act a certain way and, and he's like, how do you, how do I not take this personally? She's coming after you, Summer. And it's like, how do you not take it personally? And then you realize she does have this really awful life. It, it kind of takes the pressure off of oneself of taking it personally. It's like, mm-hmm. wow, they really isn't about me. They just have a really, everything coming out of their mouth is about themselves, really. When they say mental health is a journey, they mean it. That's why it's important to prioritize your mental health and wellness every day. When you work on yourself, it brings positive changes in all areas of your life. The long-term effects of therapy can give you the tools to deal with challenges as they arise, strengthen your relationships, and give you a more positive outlook on life. There's no better time to invest in yourself than right now. Talkspace is the number one online therapy platform that has thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. Your therapist can help you set and achieve your goals. I'm a huge advocate for therapy. It has helped me cope with my newfound anxiety and a little bit of depression that I never had until, gosh, I guess like the past few years. Therapy is a lifesaver. It's so helpful and it's such an amazing tool. Absolutely. I mean, life is hard and it's always happening. But you know what? It can be joyful too. And one of the things that helped me get there was therapy. I mean, therapy's made me so much more like aware and gracious and empathetic and kinder and you know what? A lot more patient. Talkspace has thousands of licensed therapists with years of experience in over 40 specialties, including depression, anxiety, substance abuse, trauma, anger management, relationship issues, food and eating, and so much more. I also love that Talkspace is completely secure and private and using the latest technology to store client information. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code OC to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's OC and Talkspace.com. Taylor's a weird character for me because as a fan, like as you're watching, you kind of take the opinion of of the characters you love. So how does Summer, how does Ryan, how does Seth, how do they feel about uh, Taylor? And they all kind of roll their eyes every time she's around. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. And I guess especially knowing where where it all ends up. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. (laughs) Because she had like the affair with the Dean and uh, and then eventually she's going to become like uh, the girlfriend of uh, Ryan and all that stuff. Like, it's, That's so I don't know, it's just like a very messy point. path. <laughs> so, like, think yeah. that. It's, it's wild to see these scenes now because they have such a great scene when she comes up. Oh, we're not there quite there yet, but whatever. We can bounce around. When, when she comes up and says, so, how are Seth and Summer? You know, like Brad and Angelina. Yeah, and he's like, what do you mean? And she's referring to herself as Angelina. And she's <laughs> Angelina. And she's like, it's like a six. And he's like, a 10. Oh, bad for Angelina. But I bet Brad and Jen used to be a 10. <laughs> just, the timing of it all is so wild because- I, yeah, mm-hmm. Autumn is so awesome in this role. And like- Oh my gosh. I am hating her the whole time I'm watching because I'm like, you fucking asshole. Like, you know, I always get a little personal with these things because I'm like, oh, you're going to come after <laughs> Summer? And Seth? Yep. I don't think so. <laughs> but she's doing such a good job, and she's she's really good in this episode. Yeah, she has my favorite line of the episode where she first approaches Seth and Ryan as they're walking into school, <laughs> and she's trying— to, I, I, Like, I finally understand her character after watching it so many times. Like, she's trying to fit in. She's doing what she thinks she needs to fit in. So when she's telling the story about um, the lock-in and, and Seth talking about Captain Oates, and it was mean for other kids to, to laugh at him, and then she says— uh, something along the lines of it wasn't nearly as embarrassing as that kid who befriended the deaf kid or whatever. <laughs> right. Like she's just mean and she's socially unaware, and oh. it's just the, that, that. I don't know that dichotomy is so funny. Oh yeah, she's got some, completely unaware. She's got some hysterical things. I mean, and you know, I, I was thinking about it. and I was like, wow, if there's one role that I would love to play, it would be that. But then I'm like, I she's got such good timing, such good cadence and rhythm, and. It's it's just hers. Like, nobody else should play it. And when she walks into, let's go to Taylor walking into Seth's room. Oh, my God. And she walks in. He's like, oh, whoa, hey. <laughs> and instantly goes, I like you. Now, who has the guts and the balls to say, I like you? And he's like, oh, yeah, no. Mm-hmm. And- <laughs> They're very, I personally have a hard time with being that forthcoming with things. Whether it's like, oh, I like you or I don't like you. You know what I mean? And they both are doing it. 
very openly and transparently, and it's admirable. Yeah. And then and then she says, I heard you guys were breaking up. He goes, oh, where did you hear that? She goes, I made it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where I screamed. Yeah. I was like, it is so, so cute. And just the it way she's cute. like. I, for a second, as I'm watching this, and as you know, I don't really know what happens. I'm like, do they date? <laughs> right. You know, I'm right. like, do Seth and, and Taylor date? That's the question I'm going through. But she's so manipulative. Yes. Well, and, and then... Oh, and, to and steal Captain Oates. I mean... Yeah. yeah. She takes Captain Oates. Put your hand off the captain, miss. Oh, uh, and then manipulative too because then she waits till summer's around to give it back to Seth and oh, said, yeah. you lent this to me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that... Oh, that boiled my blood. I was yeah. like, that's so manipulative. That's right. You are I mean, summer. she knows what she's doing and at the same time, it's like... It's not it's okay. Because, but imagine if she really is this sad little lonely person that the only thing she has are her thoughts, perceptions, and reality. Mm-hmm. And when it when her reality is presented to the rest of the world, it's like cuckoo. Everybody thinks like it's too much. And but then but we, they interject just enough things for Seth. You know, you like look, Yakuza. You like this this Japanese. That was funny though. He's like comic book. She's like no no no. That's whack material for dorks or whatever. <laughs> Whacking material for geeks. <laughs> yeah. I had to look it up. Taylor knows exactly what she's doing as we get past wacky material. And uh, <laughs> let's see what else. Oh, okay. So then let's cut to then when they're at the charity event yeah. and we see Veronica Townsend and mm-hmm. Paula Tricky playing even the worst version of um, Julie Cooper herself. Mm-hmm. And she totally embarrasses her. Yeah. And But then here's Seth. Obviously, he knows what an awful person she is, runs up, pretends high, and then... I actually almost called Autumn on the way here because I this scene where she's she's so upset and she's saying, I have no one. Yeah. I live in this dream world where you like me and Summer's my friend. And he's like, you think Summer's yeah. your friend? <laughs> I know. His takeaway is like, you think Summer's your friend? <laughs> like, that's the weirdest part of this whole yeah. thing. <laughs> and, and then he he... he Just the goodness comes out of Seth. You know, that selflessness yeah. that he does inhabit comes out of him. And I wanted to ask her when... He, when when she grabs his hand, well, puts she it did on, that on her cheek, and and she's doing this with it. I wanted to know if that was her, if it was Adam, it if was it was her. in the script, I or if a director her. did it. Yeah, we'll find or out. Or director who directed this one? I would love to know. Said? You guys have to let me know too, because that was so funny. It was so Fresco, funny. Michael Fresco. Oh yeah. But no, I was. I'm like, well, next time I see her, or talk to her, which we will. I have to know who did that because it's brilliant. It's just one of the, my favorites. Favorite yeah, moments. It's because, very funny. Because then she's, and he walks away and he's like, I feel good about this. And she goes, mm-hmm. It's happening. Uh huh. It's happening. Mm-hmm. It's her almost famous moment. It's all happening. <laughs> well, and I think it <laughs> encompasses being friends with him and or does he like me? No, she's taking it there. She's not like, Oh, I have a friend. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's she's like, Maybe she I'm his whacking material someone. now. <laughs> oh, I. Wow, you're on one today, huh? I am. Sorry. <laughs> the muncher and everything. You're probably pretty G-rated. I tend to go uh, the opposite direction. No, 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 no. no. I, I was going to make the munch joke. I didn't know if that was going to fly here, so <laughs> I didn't say anything. So I'm all on board. There's a lot of things they edit out. Have of you me ever been because... munched by a wave? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Rachel, a wave? No. do you go body surfing? Do you get hit by a wave? I've never heard it called munched before. You? Me neither. It's a I, but then I, I, I'm, I grew up in Wisconsin, <laughs> no. so we don't have that surf culture. So I, I can't. I, I have to back away from. I don't know that you need to have surf culture to. Uh, <laughs> I think it was maybe just a '70s term, but it is a yeah. term. I, it's, it's my term. If someone said I got munched, I wouldn't think. <laughs> yeah, they're on the when, waves. Yeah, you hear I got munched. You don't. I think call getting munched by the a waves wave took me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, a wave took me out would probably be the best way. But uh, I can't even yeah. think of another <laughs> term. I'm gonna get so much shit from my husband. Who's a surfer? <laughs> like, what Does is he it? say that? I, 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 I think we need to call Adam. Is really what we need to do <laughs> okay. so we can settle this. What is it? Be, well, it's a wipeout, okay? <laughs> right, yeah. a wipeout. But that that feels like you're actually on a board. But if you just get munched by the wave, <laughs> it's just like a little munch. <laughs> it's not a full. Okay. <laughs> We're on a tangent. <laughs> Anyway, so Taylor's all excited. And in the meantime, Summer is still... I mean, Uh, uh, how many times are you going to smack Seth in this um, episode? He deserved it. (laughs) I'm sorry. How much of that was actual contact? Because that that was a lot. I I don't know if they added... I was not afraid to hit him. (laughs) 
Yeah, I actually thought it was funny because because it was loud. when I slap him. When I'm like, well, you know, it is my fault, and I slap him. I like run, <laughs> <laughs> like you're setting up for the charity event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I slap him, and I run away. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Anyways, anyway, yeah, not afraid to actually hit him. Not afraid to actually hit him. <laughs> well, yeah. So that whole whole storyline, it was really funny, and I really liked the Seth and Summer dynamic because we're obviously very comfortable at this point. I think the whole yes, I think that the Taylor characters. Of course, she's designed for the audience to make you want to, like, just squeeze her and pop her head off. But it's just so, it's such original, um, and it's just original and refreshing. Yes. To me. Yes. I think it's I fun. do want to kill her most of the time, but yes. <laughs> but let's make a point of the saying that, that Summer is so upset, like, with, with Seth saying, she was in your room, and yeah. you didn't say anything, and you're not, I don't, just because I'm not talking to you doesn't mean you, you can go out of my sight. But then when he explains... <sighs> She's having an emotional mm-hmm. breakdown. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she says, um, uh, she says, she's about to have a physical one. <laughs> and then she, because she know he knows that Summer does, like, it's so, she makes it really hard to like her. She has no one. And, of course, Summer is that person. And I like, softened. Okay. Too. And yeah. that's exactly what I was talking about. Like, if you can try and put yourself, and she's got a really bad home life kind of thing. Yeah, I yeah. soften. And the funniest part is, like, how much... Seth just wants to go back and watch that movie. And I'm like, how bad do you just want to go watch it right now? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I love that moment because it just showed how well you two knew each other or the characters knew each other because it's just like, he's not even t- looking at the DVD or anything. You just say it and right. yeah, he's like, yeah, it's I like want to go. It's like a real relationship. <laughs> right. What do you know? And there's, isn't it nice when your <laughs> partner just knows exactly? Yes. I get that all the time. If I can, if I can attempt or… You finish, or, geez, you fin- you finish each other's sandwiches? Sandwiches. <laughs> Sentences, sandwiches, and and I predict reference. No, no. Oh. Yeah, I got it. Oh, I got wait, it. wait, wait. Which one's that? <laughs> well, it's from Frozen when they sing. We finish each other. Why can't I say what I'm saying? Finish, like <laughs> finish and sandwich. Oh. We finish each other's sandwiches. Oh, I was gonna say is that you guys sing? You and Leah singing? Oh, that was Beauty and the Beast. Okay. Oh yeah, no, that yeah, was okay. Beauty and the Beast. But we do <laughs> sing that. Too. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, my best friend and I go off on Disney tangents where we sing all the musicals very loudly. It's on your together. Instagram. It's really it is on my cute. Instagram. It's really cute. <laughs> um, so, yes, okay. I, I lose my train of thought. But anyway. So that's that. That's yes. Seth, Summer, and Taylor. Yes, that was, I just, I all I write is more good summer dialogue <laughs> because you have a lot of fun dialogue <laughs> that they write for you. Thank you. In this episode specifically. Yes. Well, let's talk about the charity event before we get to the end, but. Um, okay. You course. look so beautiful at the charity event with that green dress and your eyes. I oh my gosh. have to say. Oh my gosh, thank very you. Very pretty. I remember, first of all, everyone looked beautiful. Misha yeah, had Misha, that, that beautiful. Yeah, Misha, that Dress and the with the gold, the gold uh-huh. in the back. Yeah, and then that hairstyle was so. Yeah, she looked beautiful. Oh, I don't even know how you describe it. The and then braid they covered around. it up with Volchak's jacket. <laughs> right, and then um, Kirsten. So they always put me in kind of like the cool, bright colors, and Kirsten always had the like the pearl colors, the mm-hmm. corals. She looked beautiful too. Yeah, and you had a purple. I don't know what I was wearing. Um, uh, we did a. They did a really lovely job with the with the the uh, costumes. I have to say that green dress, mm-hmm. and it's such a shame because the camera basically cuts us off, and you get maybe waist up. Mm-hmm. It was one of the most beautiful things I wore in the entire show, and so I pretty. love the hair. And we did the makeup, and it was actually if you saw the makeup in real in sunlight, it was quite a bit, mm. but in the dark, it just kind of worked. Yeah, yeah, it was beautiful. So clearly, we don't need to go over the whole thing, but you know, um, as they're pre- prepping for all of this. Julie's having, you can see that she's just going, okay, I'm really, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Yes, I'm doing it for $300,000. And she just is having these, she's having a lot of second thoughts. Right. Because then when Kirsten comes to Julie and is like, you, you know, yeah, has that dad moment, would be proud. that's really what turns you. Yeah. Kirsten, a couple of times during the episode, Julie's waffling the whole time. And- yeah. I just, for some reason, I, I feel like Kirsten knew a little bit just because she constantly goes to Julie and being like, I'm so happy you're with me doing this. You're such a good friend. Our dad would, or my dad, Our dad. would be proud. Like, <laughs> Most I, of she keeps daddy. mentioning. <laughs> I know. She you keeps think. mentioning uh, would- that. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, then we also find out that not only um, Charlotte, not only is she doing this, she's not going to even put Julie in with any of the money. She's taking it all and going oh. to Puerto Rico. I didn't know that Puerto Rico was a safe haven. Did you? Oh, I didn't know that. But I, I kind of felt like Julie 
As manipulative as Julie is, she should know that the criminal is going to screw her over in the end. I would assume that that would be on her mind at least. Yeah. And then when Charlotte says you're not dressed and she sits down and she goes, I'll call the cops. Mm -hmm. Get dressed. (laughs) And I was like, Julie, Julie, you know, like the audience is sitting there thinking, wow, Julie's intimidated by this person. Mm -hmm. But no. What does she do? She goes, ding. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Anyway, you somewhat overwhelmed our small charity. So I'd, if, oh, when you write yeah. your checks out, let's make it out to the uh-huh. National Foundation for Substance Abuse, not our little charity. And and she's like, so she calls her bluff. She says, call the cops, call them. I was very proud of you in that moment. Yeah. 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 Good job. That became a, that, I think that was one of my favorite lines to say. This town's only to call big enough for one manipulative uh, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, sweetie. Uh, it gives her a kiss. There you yeah. go. Julie so, at her finest. That was good. Yes. That was good. And that was, you know, so we don't see Charlotte anymore. She's gone. Bye. She's gone after that. Although, so, you know, I, I think Julie probably thought through this. And she says, because Charlotte said, you don't have anybody. And she goes like, wrong. I have Kirsten. Yeah. And and I think, you know, when you think about all of the things, I also want to make a point of saying that with all that Kirsten's gone through, it has been sad, sad, negative, negative. And you, and and, and it's subtle and it's not the focal, I think, that most of the audience is noticing in this episode. But you see a woman in recovery who's doing well, is smiling and has this glow back and and doing really, really well. Mm-hmm. And I think what's interesting is you, when a friend sees somebody doing that well, when they compare it to how she was, mm-hmm. it's like night and day. Mm-hmm. It's so night and day. And I think without saying it, that those are the things that, you know, even though Julie doesn't always express it, she's thinking about those things. And yeah. uh, so it, in that respect, I think, you know, Kirsten's very much on this beautiful pink cloud of, and, and she needs to, she needs to really enjoy those moments. So I think Kelly did. A but I also think it was great when she, um, when she said to Sandy, like, you don't need to protect me because she knows something's going on with Sandy. So she's not fragile, I think she says. And I, I love that, too, where it's just like, like, I'm good. Like, I'm strong. Like, you can lean on me a little bit. I, I love that between them, too, as well. Mm-hmm. That was one of the best Sandy Kirsten scenes because, yeah, we, um, Sandy, I guess it's, he's been at the Newport Group, but I guess it's his official first day I, as the CEO and they're restructuring and find out that they have to fire, fire all these people that we've never seen before. But that's okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but then he's like, no, I'll take a 30% um, uh, cut and I'm going to fire in my way. But but I thought, but you could tell that he wanted to talk to her. And that's when she said, I'm taking a Kirsten day. So he sees it too. Mm-hmm. He's like, my, mm-hmm. I can't give this to my wife. I'm sure people are on eggshells around her. I can't give all this to my, this, mm-hmm. this stressful stuff to my wife because she's in this beautiful place. I don't want to bring anything stressful to her. And then, like you said, Dylan, that last scene where she says, he says, oh, well, you are your father's daughter. And she said, I'm your wife. Mm. Oh, yeah. that, yeah. yeah. I feel like that's a really underrated line as well. How great is Sandy? We know you love Sandy. He's like the core <laughs> of this I, show, right? Yeah, so I, I did a commentary for the After movie, which is a fanfic movie. Uh, and he was in that as well. And <laughs> I just geeked out as soon as I saw him. I didn't know he was in it. Um, so, yeah, I just, I, I love Peter Gallagher. So, yeah, that was yeah. awesome. <laughs> we love him too. Yeah. Yeah, Peter. Well, then let's jump back to the old... Um, oh, how it ends with Volchuk. Yeah. Yeah, because... Uh, well, you know, we forgot to say that Marissa and Chili find find him at the beach. And she shows up with her... Just tries to bribe him. With her Cartier watch. That she got for her 16th birthday. He's like, I have Kmart special. <laughs> 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 Which is out of, out of, <laughs> out of business now. There's no, Kmart is? There's no more Kmarts. Are there's there? not? I don't think so. I don't know. I feel like there are. Maybe are, in the maybe Midwest. Uh, I know the one in yeah. LA close. I might be missing, I might be missing, uh, uh, mixing that up with Kohl's. I, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Both Yeah, K's. we have Kohl's. I thought Kmart's gone. Kmart's still mm-hmm. there? K- Kmart still exists. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, good. Katie just told us. Good, good, good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways. Well, anyway. Washes, so that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And uh, I I gotta hand it to, to Marissa. She, Misha plays cold, tough chick too. It's like, it's interesting, their dynamic. I mean, this is where I speculate that the, that She's the writers- She's not scared of them because they're attracted to each other? Well, I think the writers are like, <laughs> because they're always, as a, you're always looking to put people together, break people up. You know, when, when they said, we never put 
they they talk about it like would Marissa and Seth get no they never did that they never did the summer Ryan thing yeah I'm aware but it, <laughs> I know you're so, you're so <laughs> resentful so mad but I think shouldn't have played him so hot those, and cold that's the problem <laughs> that's right they see those two on camera I bet the writers are like oh yeah we're mm-hmm. doing that mm-hmm. wasn't that like the that? plot with Marissa though like everyone fell in love with her. Like literally every every season, there's there's Oliver, every. there's uh, Volchak, uh, Olivia Wilde's character. Like literally everyone that meets her just falls in love with her. Yeah. It's just a matter of if she reciprocates those feelings, I guess. Didn't didn't Josh? I mean, Josh said like she is the most beautiful girl, mm-hmm. and everybody falls in love with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the way that Marissa was, the, was described. Yes, and that's that's her it. cross to bear. We're finding because yeah, because she's always like, oh no, he just wants to you know, be my friend and come over and study. And he brought me this really <laughs> beautiful necklace. Oh, we did talk and- about, yeah, we didn't talk about that scene with you two where it's like, she's like, it's, do I say something or it makes it awkward uh, to Johnny? Like, Oh yeah, yeah, that she knows that he's in love with her. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. the whole thing is awkward. What do you say to somebody? You don't. You don't. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> you ignore that. But anyway, Heather shows up and gives the the watch back at mm-hmm. the party mm-hmm. and drags her out. And he says, I need the money now. And somehow convinces her to get in the van. It's so shady. <laughs> but she's, <laughs> she's she, like, okay, she, I'll go to the ATM. Do you think? I kind of bought it, though. Like, he's so good. He's just like, I owe someone some money. I only need a couple hundred. So you're coming with me. I listen, like, oh, I'll don't go get me right wrong. Now. I would go with him. I, you know well, what? Well, just because he looks so good. Uh, duh. I, <laughs> I do. I, I try to play devil's advocate in my own head, but I, I did buy it as well. But mm-hmm. because I didn't remember what was happening. Yeah, I bought it. So too. now that I've seen it, I'm like, oh man, you shouldn't have done that. But uh, it was still stupid. It, it, it definitely because she really is doing her best to make sure that Ryan never fights this guy and gets kicked out of Harbor. Everybody knows how what the stakes are. Right. So, and so, Ryan and Marissa are cute. Like, and at the end of the episode, you really see them kind of like as a couple. You know, there's like those moments. Oh yeah, and we forgot that he put up the punching bag, mm-hmm. and she's like, "What?" She doesn't quite get it. But I'm like, "Wait a second, Summer was there first. She was punching. Yeah, she gets it out first. That's right. Yeah, you got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but 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 I think what's interesting is Ryan is doing so much to squish it down to mm-hmm. just like. That that punching you see bag it, yeah, at the well. end where he just, yeah. So yeah. Well, if we're talking about Ryan suppressing <laughs> feelings, <laughs> I, even at the end when everything's resolved and they're sitting in front of the fire, like she's she's kind of like doing this banter thing, and he's just kind of like, mm. like he's just suppressing all his feelings. So it's cool to see when he lets it out on the punching bag, and you got the bloody knuckles and everything. I love that, but yeah, he's just like, yeah, he needs therapy. Well, he it, needs therapy. <laughs> well, of course, we we skipped over him getting the phone call. So he was ta- he's talking to Johnny, and he says, "Where's Marissa?" And then the phone call co- from Marissa's phone, and he says, "I've got your girl. Meet me under the pier." And he co- takes off with Johnny, and he's like, "I got a plan, but if it doesn't work out, take Marissa and run." And so <laughs> I'm ex- so we see him run up full speed, instantly. Cam is on the defense, like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" And luckily enough, there's a bottle there. <laughs> he breaks it off. <sighs> so I'm, I'm imagining in the script, it says, Ryan starts acting so wild that the crazy Volchek is now on the defensive and scared. And there's truth in that. Mm-hmm. It, have, have you ever had a situation where you've had to act crazy to scare somebody? <laughs> in my dreams nightmares <laughs> I was walking down Sunset Boulevard with Ernie once yeah. back in the 90s and we yeah. were walking back from Cat and the Fiddle and yeah. it was like 2 in the morning Sunset La Brea and a couple I don't know guys on the corner doing up to no good I would we, we were set, we were we've been arguing <laughs> drunk arguing and we were walking like 20 feet from each other and yeah. sure enough as I walked up some guys were like hey man to me and I'd heard you act, if you act crazy oh my God, man, don't you this out? like scream and this guy was like whoa man what's up with her like they think you're weird so if you act <laughs> like we're not touching that yeah crazy. we're not touching the crazy <laughs> so it reminded me of this and so when he says he literally this you know, I'm gonna use that. Like, if a boyfriend comes up and I just don't feel like it, I'm like, <laughs> 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 no. If you ever find yourself on the street in a situation, if you start like convulsing or shaking or doing something that's really crazy, 
chances are people will walk away from you that are up to no Just good. smash a bottle. Just or smash, smash a bottle. Or just, you happen fight. to be a convenient yeah. bottle laying there. Yeah. What would you rather have? I, I, this is just guy brain thinking. I'm like, what would I rather have in a fight? Would I rather have the broken bottle or the wooden board? I thought about that. I, like, I don't know why. I've just, I've thought about that for years. And what do you come up with? I, I've always thought the board because you got the distance, you know, yeah, you can attack it, yeah. further. But I think, but the, then the, the bottle does so much damage. If you can get contact, yeah. I think the yeah. idea is that he's supposed to see the wild animal that is Kid Chino for the first time. Because he, I think he mistakes Ryan for another, uh, just another like Luke or wealthy, something. Yeah. You know, and, private school kid. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I Ryan guess he doesn't goes, know. He's like, and he says, he you, you want to do it, you have to kill me. And he takes it seriously. I thought Ben could have gotten bigger <laughs> or scarier, mm-hmm. in my opinion. I agree. I actually agree. Because I, if I was Cam and this is like this rich kid, he's, he's got too much to lose. He's not going to fight to the death. Come on. So I think if uh, it was more violent, more aggressive, I would have bought it yeah. a little bit more. And Because Cam has been raring for this fight. Like, he's kidnapping people to try to get this fight. <laughs> he's going to back down because there's a, yeah. a bottle involved. Right. Uh, Literally kidnapping people. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. But offering her his jacket. Right. But then <laughs> we do man. see the the rage and the anger with the bloody fists. And, and it also plants the seed for what's to come. So... That is the episode. That is the episode. That was great. It was a lot. Well, it's a lot. Yeah. I like the, I, I'm liking these episodes because I don't remember season three as well. Yeah, well, yeah. We have some uh, trivia for you. Ooh. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. <laughs> I have a horrible memory, but I'll, I'll do my best. Okay. That's all we can ask. How many times have you watched it? Uh, Your DVD. Probably three times full through. Wow. Okay. In, first question. In season one, when Marissa asks Ryan who he is in the very first episode, what does he say? Whoever you want me to be. <laughs> yeah, they, it was, it was multiple yeah. choice, but you got it. Ding, I ding, didn't ding. didn't even need nah. the multiple choice. Uh, multiple choice is for... Okay, we won't even give it to you. Yeah. Whatever you call them. In season one, where does Ryan get a job? Uh, at the lobster, sh- lobster shack or lobster whatever. Lobster something. Close. Close. Crust- another crustacean. Uh, another crustacean. Oh, that's the name of the place? No. No. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, 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 another crustacean is then. Let's go there for dinner. No. Um, that's a good thing. Yeah, that the, is. Uh, do it, multiple choice. Give me multiple choice. Well, you're going to get it. B- the Balboa Lighthouse, Newport Group. <laughs> he doesn't have one. Or the Crab Shack. Crab Shack. There you yeah, go. There you ding, go. Ding, ding, ding. Damn. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, here's a true or false one. The Cohen's favorite takeout food is pizza. False. Huh. What is their Isn't favorite? It is it Chinese? Thai food. Oh. Thai food. Thai food. Summer's favorite show is, this is a true or false. Summer's favorite show is The Valley. True. I don't know if it's her favorite show. I know she loves the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's You're, the only show she ever talks about, yeah. so we'll just say. Uh-huh. You're right. There Which are uh, some of my favorite episodes. My favorite, one of my favorite episodes is because it's so self-referential, too, that season one episode. Okay, we have, and then here's our bonus question. What reality series is The Valley based on? The Hills. Very good. Very yeah. good. Yeah. It Yay. says Laguna Beach <laughs> and The Hills. Well, because it started as Laguna Beach, and then they moved to L.A., and it oh. became The Hills. Oh! Right. So... Didn't it? Yeah. The rest is Dylan written. Yeah. That well, Dylan, how and how charming so fun. and fun are you? And congratulations on your followers and your channel. And are you gonna do another episode and comment on it? Well, what I I really wish I would have saved it because I'm doing a series now where I watched the pilot and the last episode, <gasps> uh, the series finale of a show. Uh-huh. That would have been perfect. Yeah. But now since I've done the pilot, I don't know if I could do that for the OC. Uh, um, yeah, you can. Well, you've done the pilot. You can do the end. You make your own rules, my man. I feel like I was I was thinking about doing Heart of Dixie, but oh. now now that now that we talked, like I, I can't say anything bad about the show. So now oh. I don't know. Oh, if you I can, can joke talk around shit. Not, I don't so. care. No, just I, don't talk shit about right. me. And we're <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think, I'll think about I it think then. part of the fun is to that that people love is to make fun of the shows. Yeah, we like to, we do that. Yeah, I, yeah, and I. Right? Most of the time, it's, it's it's all in just good fun, joking around. I think that's what people like about my channel. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, not overly serious or critical. It's yeah, just it's very just funny. Like you're hanging out. Yeah, thank you. Well, some pretty heightened. She um, has some series drama. you could do. I have some movies. I mean, listen, the options are endless. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, hit me up. Let me know which, uh, which you want me to cover. <laughs> Just go down our filmographies on yeah, IMDb. Yeah, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, I have a resume on IMDb, and yeah. it's not very long. <laughs> Well, it has been an absolute pleasure. It's been so fun. And I think you're so funny. And I really do enjoy watching yes. your commentary. And so I'm so happy to have been introduced to your YouTube channel. Yeah. It's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I'm so glad you guys started the podcast. It's uh, it's fun to re-listen to, <laughs> to old episodes <laughs> and to have the insider track and, and hear what it was like from your side. is just amazing. Thanks. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you all so much for listening. Please follow, rate, and review. Welcome to the OC Bitches, wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you like to watch us, check us out on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Bye, bitches. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to start with the pilot episode and catch all of our episode recaps.